podcast is ready. I added everybody Indeed. in Discord, and I was like, let's talk about it. And they're like typing in the Discord room. Get your ass Get in, in the live chat room. God damn it. I mean, if they're typing in, the, they don't notice that we're, they probably don't like, just, I would post it in there, you know, source of the information. What is up, everybody? Happy <sighs> Thursday. <laughs> Thor's Day. <laughs> it is Thor's Day, rabbits. <sighs> oh, man, it's Thursday already. Already? Oh. I feel like this week has gone by slower than shit. Oh, it has, but it's just like we're it's getting so close to eight, eight, week eight. <sighs> week eight, dude. Yeah, this week has gone by the slowest by far. For you? For sure. Oh, yeah. I felt like last week and the week before that were like over and done with quick. Um, oh. But yeah, welcome to <laughs> welcome to week 7.4. <laughs> See, now you told I was like, oh, yeah, I'll post it at everyone, too, and we'll be able to gauge the difference and everything. I uh, apparently just posted in the mod chat. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost week eight, everybody. We're, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> we had a whole discussion <laughs> before the show. <laughs> oh, man, I feel like uh, I'm losing my mind. I'm losing my mind. Oh, uh, that's fucking gold. The good news is I figured out what our problem was last night. Uh, it is the fact that um, Windows HDR, the monitor I have upstairs, is technically HDR approved. And apparently when a new update from Windows came through, it auto-turned on HDR from within the Windows settings, not even like an NVIDIA game setting. Yeah. So even when I was turning off HDR in Gears of War, the monitor kept like flipping between the two settings and uh it was causing obs not to be able to even capture it mm -hmm. figured that out turned off hdr now everything works just fine <clears throat> cool. here's here's a answer that i don't know if i add everybody in one room does it just notify every single person in our discord yeah oh, okay if, it, if it's an well, open room I didn't, if it's a I private didn't. room it's different like mod right. chat only notifies the mods well i only i did it in movies and tv in general so whatever you guys oh, get double the notifications you get double the notifications you're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah, but like we said, we don't know if more people have muted general than muted movies and TV. Yeah. It depends on what they've muted. We yeah. don't know. We, we don't, don't know. know. We know that a lot of people mute our shit because they're tired of our stuff. They're tired of listening to us, so they just mute it. I don't even know how to respond to that. Yeah, they're like, <laughs> I'll turn this back on when you bring back Kolok or Power Rangers. Wow. That's how they are. Wow. I know how you are. I'm, I'm fucking watching you, y'all. I see all you Kolok fans that keep tagging me on Twitter, but I don't see in the chat room. I see your intentions and your intestines. I'm watching you. I see you. I see you. Trying to get me to pay attention to you on Instagram. I'm posting a picture of me every goddamn day, but yet you won't come watch our shows. I ain't, giving you, I ain't giving you no attention. Get out of here. Boom. Zenblade says muting until Trivia Hops returns. Well. <laughs> <laughs> well. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Well. Um, I'm a little tired. You tired? A little bit. Yeah. A little bit. Adam did not go to sleep last night. Nah. Nah. We don't have time for that. I told Zach literally five minutes before we went live, I was like, hey, man, I'm going to run upstairs and change really quick so it looks like I give a shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he did yeah, not go yeah, to sleep yeah, last yeah, night. Yeah, he yeah. had a couple uh, a couple sponsor jobs to get through, and I appreciate you working so hard, man. Hey, man, we got to get it done. I told you, like, Malika and I can do Onward Deny It, and you were like, I oh, don't know. i got a two-hour break. We'll see how I feel. You're going to fall asleep, and then I'm going to be like, hey, Adam. <laughs> Adam. Adam. Okay, fuck it. Let's just do Onward. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I, I hope that uh, I feel pretty good to watch them. I actually really do like that movie quite a bit. We'll be watching that later tonight it's at good. 6. I think it's a fun movie. Yeah. Uh, I, I think the – well, I won't give it away. But I was just kind of surprised by the movie because I didn't know exactly what to expect. Um, I, don't, I, don't think it, I don't think – I think at this point it's not a spoiler that it's a, quite a bit references like D&D &D and all that kind of stuff. So yeah. I was surprised by, by that. I didn't know it was going to do uh, all that fun referencing. So pretty cool. Pretty cool, pretty cool, pretty cool. I fixed another bug today. Oh, yeah? What's that? Yeah. It's funny. I feel like every day I should just update people on the bugs I have to squash every day. So much of my job right now is just squashing bugs because we're trying to, like, do all these different things. Yeah. Uh, when li So people don't know this, but yesterday was a crazy hectic morning for me because live stream forced an update, which erased all of our settings. Yeah. And when I tried to import a file, it said that that file, um, no, like, was not compatible. So we couldn't even open that file. Here you go, baby boy. Uh, couldn't open that file. And uh, so I had to rebuild the project from scratch. And I was like rushing to get that done before the stream started. 
and when Livestream um, reinstalled it, it's like the weird things that I figure out from doing this shit now where like a weird problem will happen. I'm like, oh, it's this thing. So like uh, I know a couple weeks ago you all probably saw every once in a while when we'll do one of these like alerts uh, from vMix over NDI, you would see like little artifacts to the right and yeah. like a line. And um, I realized that was happening because the NDI uh, underscore 64 dot DLL, you know, oh, the, that bullshit. The, the process file uh, for the NDI is a different version than the NDI tools that gets installed. And when you install NDI tools, it doesn't overwrite the ones within each program setting. So I have to mainly go into the folders of these programs that are using NDI and overwrite the DLL file. Um, and there's nowhere to find that you have to do this online. This is just hours of me banging my head against a fucking monitor <laughs> on weekends. How? Just like, how? How? <laughs> <laughs> how? Why do these problems exist? And just trying to overcome it. But uh, after live stream, I was like, oh, that problem. I've seen, I've had to problem shoot that already. Yeah. Now I'm one of the few. And it's like one of those things where I've thought many times about. I could probably create a whole YouTube channel on just, <laughs> the, the, you know, like the people who put out a video that's like a really monotone, like, and you go over here and you click this <laughs> and you open this. And I was control like, C, control yeah, V. I was like, shit, I'm one of those people. I could do that. I could literally. I don't know what we did to deserve this right now, but. I could literally put out tons of tutorial videos on how to overcome these problems that we can't find solutions to. That's what drives me crazy yeah. is we've gotten to the point now where when I Google this stuff, no one else has encountered the problem yeah. or no one's talked about it. Yeah. And you're just shit out of luck. Yeah, and you're like, I guess I got to be the one to figure it out. Yeah, like the HDR bullshit or yeah. today. Oh, here's one from this morning where I almost lost my shit. Spent all day yesterday setting up the new – we got a new show today, everybody. Cookie we Quest. We got a new show, Cookie Quest, at 4 p.m. We're sending Lucas out into a COVID landscape <laughs> – I am legend. The, the <laughs> he's been he's the been scavenger he's hunt. been antibody tested and uh, we're you know ready to ready oh, to nice. rock out in the real world. Uh, but no, he's gonna be wearing a mask and practicing safe social distancing. Um, but we are sending him to Little Tokyo God damn, good. on a scavenger hunt, and we programmed out like a whole scavenger <sighs> hunt app with trivia and everything. I set it up, so if there's misspellings, it's my fault. We didn't have time to proofread me. Oh yeah, shit, yeah, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> it's gonna be on my dyslexic ass. Uh, tested it, I was up really late last night, like testing all the overlays and the interactions and how it'll all work. I'm working, super excited about this. Working fucking great. This morning, I'm like, you know, I never trust anything. I'm just gonna go ahead and boot everything back up, do another test. And we had that problem with the RTMP signals once again, where it says, RTMP input, perfect streaming, 90 kilobytes per second excuse me and then i check the output oh 7,000 kilobytes per second check the input 90 kilobytes per second okay uh go to the intermediary go to the server on the live view website oh 7,000 kilobytes per second no that's good uh go to my input 90 kilobytes per second what the fuck and then i was like this has happened to us before yeah years ago mm. randomly i was like we've had this issue <laughs> what was it and i kept thinking and thinking and i was like that's it it's like some sort of weird HDMI EDID issue where even though the output is working, the input over RTMP back into our system would not allow the signals to match up correctly and uh, it will not pass through video. It just won't pass it. It's streaming technically to the server, but it won't allow that video to decode. So uh, just unplugging the camera and the output and then plugging them back in and restarting works that's the worst possible thing and whenever i feel like 99.9 percent .9 of the time it's a holy shit thanks 252 what are you doing what happened <laughs> what happened what happened well we're at 48 percent of our goal for the day what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> we just started i'm losing my mind <laughs> <laughs> hey thanks <sighs> thank you so much for the support yep um it's so irritating to find out how many things get fixed just by turning off and turning it hey, on. Oh, my God. Last night with OBS, turn it off, back on. Okay. <laughs> breathe. Uh, just breathe. Woosa, woosa. I, I ran into that issue with my computer. Uh, I was editing stuff in Premiere, and all of a sudden, it like 
the input for my headset was removed, and I was it was it would only oh. play out through oh my, my monitors, God. and I was like, "What the fuck?" The, okay, we could rant about audio sourcing in Premiere for hours. One of the most frustrating aspects of using Adobe Premiere is getting audio to work. The amount yeah. of times I've had to clear my preferences file forced on open to get audio to even recognize yeah. is at least once every couple weeks. There's and a lot of again, frustrating stuff with it. That's a solution that Adobe tries to bury. You can't yeah. find people. Adobe won't answer with that solution. you got to yeah. dig deep into Reddit to find people being like, yeah, finally figured out why audio won't work in Premiere. Oh, my God. <laughs> it, it, it gets really annoying and just like it's time consuming. That's the biggest thing is like mm -hmm. every morning, you know, like, yeah, like I stayed up all night to work on this, this sponsored video thing and I got it done, thankfully. But, you know. By by ten o'clock, if I'm not working on if like nobody's working on stuff for today, yeah, then like we're behind. Oh yeah, 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 <laughs> we're yeah. behind. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I decided easily. to go to bed last night because my stomach hurt so bad, and I'd stayed up all night working on Cookie Quest. I was yeah. like, <sighs> I'll do the overlays in the morning, and, and then of course words. I come down here in the morning, and the Cookie Quest tech isn't working. I'm like, oh, why didn't yeah. I do the overlays last night? Yeah. Oh, now I'm behind. On, su ah! on Sunday night, I ended up working on a lot of stuff from Monday. And honestly, that like made my Monday morning so much smoother. Yep. So it's, now I'm like, okay, I got to do I, it every I, day before. I like. have to make myself do it. Yeah. I just have to because I never know what problem I'm going to run into in the morning yeah. when I turn everything back on. Yeah. Uh, I will say I was expecting my day to go even worse. But you leaving everything on in your sleep haze last night. Well, I left the computer on because I wasn't sure if uh, you had say needed stuff saved. Mm. So I was like, I'm just going to leave it on just in case. Usually I would never leave all my stuff on yeah. overnight. Uh, but you leaving it on is the only reason we went live at 11. Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> it's the only reason because <laughs> the other tech issues would have kept that from happening on time. Oh, but because you didn't shut everything down, it saved me a good hour and a half oh. this morning. Right. So. Hell yeah, Woo! bro. <laughs> well, because I saw you had like Photoshop open. I was like, I don't know if you saved any of this stuff. I'm just going to leave it. I'm just going to turn all the lights off. So whatever. <laughs> I guess that worked out. It worked out really <laughs> well because uh, ran into other shoes. Yeah, exactly. Uh, after this, we'll be playing. We'll be doing board gaming. Uh, we'll be doing mangaka. It's a. It's like a drawing game. We're going to yeah. have to draw comics. People are super stoked to watch my shitty handwriting or drawing, uh, drawing. abilities. I, haven't, I, I told Malika, I was like, I'm going to get frustrated playing this. And she's yeah. like, why? And I was like, because I have a master's degree degree in art and i haven't practiced cartooning in 10 years mm -hmm. and i will only be frustrated i don't have a master's but i uh i used to draw all the time as a kid but you know it's just like i haven't had time to sit there and like draw so yeah. and it's, it's very like and shit. it's two very different things like drawing traditionally is so different than cartooning yeah and i feel like when I haven't drawn in a long time, I can pick up a pencil and draw traditionally mm -hmm. um, because it's a much different, like, it's it's eye to hand, you know, and I can go with the flow. Mm -hmm. Cartooning takes so much practice. It is a practiced kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, you have to really learn the different ways to communicate through the expressions and the line weight and all those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And I used to do it in a theme park. I did character work uh, at a theme park. And... It was hard for me because I came from traditionally training, yeah, uh, from traditional training. But it's really easy for me to go back into you know charcoal and painting. But when I sit there with like a marker and I try to cartoon again, I'm like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's so hard. Oh, it's tough. It's uh, tough, man. So we do. Then we'll be doing Cookie co Cookie Quest. Cookie at four. Quest. Uh, that, I'm really excited about that. I think that'll be a lot of fun. And uh, it's. It's so cool to have one show idea be able to spark off all these other ideas and things that like we could do if we had you know a couple more oh, people and crew to help. I'm but. really excited to see how this goes. You all are going to be able to be involved. Yeah. Um, you're going to be helping Lucas. Yeah. So I built this first mission. His mission today is Little Tokyo, and he's going to have to um, go find all of the pictures that I put within this scavenger hunt. Mm -hmm. It'll be on screen, you'll be able to see the pictures too, and you're gonna be able to help him by going to Google Maps, trying to find where this is, trying to look it up, and there'll also be trivia questions. Mm -hmm. If Lucas gets 5,000 points, each location is worth 500 points, but each trivia question is worth 1,000. And I put a couple bonuses in there too. Woo! Or 100, sorry, 100 points. So it equals like, there's like five locations, and five trivia questions, and then two bonus questions in case he misses a couple. But if he gets 5,000 points, we're going to give away another member to the Keebler Club for this weekend. 
But uh, it's going to yeah. be super fun. It's Hell a chance yeah. for you all to kind of like really dig in to Little mm-hmm. Tokyo in L.A. Yeah. and learn a lot about its history while also helping him solve the kind of very surface level. This is our first trial run. Yeah. And I didn't have – I only had that window that Malika played Final Fantasy to prep everything. Yeah. Uh, I feel like if this goes over well, we could do so much cool stuff with this in the future because yeah. there's so many possibilities with it. And I think a lot of the interaction tools that we've built previously could become a part of that as well. Like we, we, we just like randomly just start spitballing some things, but it's a really cool idea. And I think it's a good opportunity. You know, some people yesterday were mentioning that the most that they get to see out of uh, other states or cities is like L.A. and New York. But like how much of L.A.? Yeah. You really get well, to that's see. what I really learned doing that bike ride. Yeah. People were just like, wow, I've never seen LA like this. Yeah. It was so it's cool a to like. Totally different perspective. And so I was like, well, the one thing with the bike is we're just kind of going through. So mm-hmm. this idea kind of came from like, let's really dig into a neighborhood. Yeah. You got two hours to walk around one neighborhood and really dig in, look for those details, look for the little things that you might not notice even if you live in the city yeah. and you just walk past. For sure. It's going to be really interesting. I'm uh, I'm pumped for it. I hope the signal holds up. Yeah. Um, uh, as we know, IRL can be, you know, temperamental. Yeah. Uh, but I think the tech's really cool. And yeah. I'm really pumped about the tech. For sure. For Speaking sure. of, I got I to gotta text message him the Wi-Fi code. Oh, okay. Uh, tomorrow night, we'll be watching It Comes at Night from A24. That'll be on Netflix. Uh, tomorrow, or next week's movies, I should say. Monday, we're doing Old Boy. Tuesday, Cursed Films. Wednesday, 36th Chamber of Shaolin. So a pretty cool lineup of, of uh, different movies, little mini docs, uh, and stuff like that. So I think it's gonna be it's gonna be a fun week. I'm really excited to watch Chris films with everybody. I think uh, I I'm, hope I'm that you all enjoy pumped. it. I'm super yeah. pumped. Yeah, I think it's gonna be a, a fun watch along. Also, Booksmart last night was awesome. I I love that. Th- movie. That was my second time watching that movie. Maybe third, second or third. Uh, I I think every time I watch it, I like it more and more and more. And I think something that you or Malika said kind of perfectly encapsulates that movie for me. It does an amazing job of capturing that high schoolness, but unlike the 80, 80s movies that are kind of a time capsule or ref- very reflective of their time, Booksmart, I think, has the opportunity to be a little bit more universal for a longer period of time. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. So I really liked it. It's such a, a good movie. I, I really, really love its heart. Yeah. It's, it's humor. It's editing. You know, it's, it's, it's good. Yeah. It's got a great yeah. message. Did we, already, did we already hit 50% of our goal? We did. The chat's getting active right now. Hot diggity dog. Look at y'all. Woo-woo. Productive and shit. That's awesome. Hell yeah. That's crazy. Hell yeah. Also, I'm feeling a little bit better today. I don't know Good. about you. Good. No. No? No. I'm like, I'm, I would say yesterday I was probably like 5% feeling good. And I'd say now today I'm about 25% feeling good. So an improvement, but uh, still not feeling 100%. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm. Like in between, yeah. Uh, Fluctuates. I don't know how much the chat wants me to share, but uh. yo, same, (laughs) same, (laughs) same. (laughs) I don't know how Uh, TMI we want to be on this uh, uh, podcast here. Yeah, yeah. Um, You know, (laughs) you know, whatever. It it could just be exhaustion. To be totally honest, it could just be exhaustion um, because we've been pushing really hard. Mm -hmm. We we've been working our asses off through this, you know. Uh, really proud of what we're doing and really proud of the community, but you know, it's, it's, it's a lot. Yeah. Um, I'm so pumped about this afternoon though. I really hope it goes over well. And Same. speaking of Lucas sounds like he needs my help starting at three 30. So I'll probably have to jump off the board game a little early to make sure he's got the tech set up yeah. properly. Sounds good. Sounds it's a little good. complicated. A little bit. A little got bit. A little, little complicated tech for Let's this. Let's talk about some fun shit. Yeah, man. Uh, I don't know how this announcement got completely. I don't know. I completely missed this announcement. They announced the cast for the Cassian Andor show, Whew. and I didn't notice. It happened on Friday. I had seen some stuff in my Twitter feed that people were talking about, like, oh, this character might be in the Cassian Andor show, and I was like, oh, that's really cool. I did not, had no freaking idea that Star Wars actually announced this officially on their website on Friday, and I found out today while watching the Star Wars show. They were like, oh, Cassian Andor uh, cast announced, and I was like, sick, I'm going to watch this, and then I was like, then in the middle of the show, they're like, oh, yeah, we announced this on Friday. I'm like, what the fuck? How did I miss this? So they did announce... For those of you who don't know, they are doing a show uh, on Cassian Andor, the character from Rogue One, played by Diego Luna. It's going to be a series that takes place five years before Rogue One, a Star Wars story. I don't know. They did announce originally when they 
talked about doing the show that Alan Tudyk was going to be in it as K2SO, but he's not announced in the cast list. Hmm. So I don't know if that means that Is K2SO... Is that because that was already announced? I don't know. Yes, yeah, so I don't know if that means that K2SO may not be a character until later on in the show. I don't really know. But they announced a few cast members... Two of which we'll recognize, one of which is a returning character from the Star Wars universe. Genevieve O'Reilly will be coming back as Mon Mothma, which mm. was really cool. She was in Episode 3. Her scenes were deleted, but then they put her in Rogue One, which I thought was really cool. And Stellan Skarsgård will be in the show. He was Dr. Eric Selvig in the Marvel movies, and he's done like 100 million thousand other things. Yeah, um, <laughs> lots of stuff. Yeah, lots of stuff other than Marvel and Star Wars shit. Uh, really excited to have him. I, I feel like... Once you're in the Mar- once you're in the Disney family, you are interchangeable between Marvel and, D- and uh, Star Wars. There's so many actors who have jumped back and forth. Mm-hmm. I'm now waiting, like, all right, when are we gonna put John Boyega in a in a, in a movie? When are we gonna <laughs> put Daisy Ridley in a movie? Let's get Oscar Isaac in there. I wouldn't wait on Boyega. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know if Disney management is thrilled. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. It's it's weird though to me because I feel like a lot of those, uh, maybe not a lot. There are a few people who have come out of the Star Wars movies talking a little bit more openly about about mainly m- mainly john boyega and oscar isaac and oscar a little isaac, bit yeah uh um, boyega don't give a fuck no no he's like i'm done with those movies man i'm gonna go party and i'm like <laughs> hey dude i get it you've made a bunch of money so why wouldn't you go party well i mean and he was promised a much bigger role than he got yeah yeah that's very true uh, uh that's very true too so i i mean i would love to see those actors uh, show up in marvel movies i think they'd be really really good mm-hmm. um but in any case, I'm super excited for this Casting Andor show. I'm excited to see what we get to explore. I do like the fact that it's five years before. That means that we get a big gap of time between that and Rogue One. So we'll get to explore some uncharted territory. Because uh, I think fi- I, the solo movie technically is uh, even farther back than that, I think. I think it's a few years even before that. So it'll be fun to sort of see some of that uncharted territory. Tony Gilroy, who was the co-writer on Rogue One, he's going to be writing, directing, and show running the Cassian Andor show, uh, which I'm pretty stoked about. Um, I know he came in, never was really confirmed, but apparently he had come in uh, to help Gareth Edwards do some <laughs> additional photography. <laughs> what just happened? I don't know what I just put in my mouth. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's the that's the that's the quote of the month here. What is it? What does it taste like? I'm fucking no try. It. Okay. Don't mind us. Ooh. What is that? It's like I'm eating a flower. <laughs> it like it like percolates. It does have this like flowery, lavendery something yeah, something to like it. Yeah, it builds in your mouth. I don't know what that is. Pretty good. I do enjoy it. Um, completely lost my train of thought. Oh, his brother, Dan Gilroy, will also be uh, writing, helping. Uh, he'll be one of the co-writers of the series. If you like Nightcrawler, you're going to like Dan Gilroy because he directed and wrote that movie. Er, I think he wrote it. I'm pretty sure he wrote it. Uh, Nightcrawler is fucking choice. Uh, probably one of my, in my top three. That movie's fucked up. Yeah, in probably my top three Jake Gyllenhaal movies. It's so oh my good. God. It's so good. And Riz Ahmed, mo- Riz Ahmed is in it. One of the most upsetting movies I've ever watched. Yeah. yeah. So upsetting. Yeah. Ooh. So good. So good. So I'm pretty I'm pretty excited about this show. They announced a few other cast members. I'm not familiar with some of these actors. Bo Willem or sorry. Um, Denise Goff and Kyle Soller. I'm not familiar with their work. I don't know what they've done previously, but regardless, uh, I'm still super excited for the casting and or show. I like Diego Luna a lot. I would love it if they brought in G- Gael Garcia Bernal in some sort of a role. That be would be tight. <laughs> When's the last time they did something together? I don't Man, know. Man, early 2000s, it was just like those bros were together in everything. The last project I think that they were in development on was a remake or a reboot of Zorro. And it was going to be like an apocalyptic, dark apocalyptic take on Zorro hmm. that was kind of supposed to be sent some future. Which I was like, fuck, I'll watch that movie. I love those two. Let's do it. Uh, no release date. No release date for the Casting Andor show, obviously. I think they're just kind of getting the wheel spinning. And who knows when they'll be able to go into production. Uh, as we all know, like, nobody has an answer for that yet. But I'm super, I'm super excited about it. I'd love to know what everybody in the chat room thinks. If you guys are excited about it. To see a returning character. I know we talk a lot about how we want to see new things and new characters. Cassie Andor is is probably like one of those very few characters from that movie 
that I think could make a really cool prequel show. Yeah, there's a lot of mystery there. There's a lot of mystery there. Yeah. The other character who I think would be cool is Ben Mendelsohn's character, uh, Orson Krennic. Or if we even got more story on the girl who starred in the movie, who the trailer showed so much promise for, and then it felt like 80% of the movie got left on the cutting floor. <laughs> I would love to know more about the behind the scenes of making that movie because I feel no, like they, people have been so tight lipped. Yeah, but just from watching the trailer, you know, shit, that movie got recut. Yeah, it got yeah. recut like crazy. Yeah, especially in the third act, there's a lot of changes that they made. There was supposed to be stuff that happened where they get the plans of the Death Star and they have to run it across a beach, and we've seen those shots of those Imperial walkers trying mm -hmm. to snipe them on the beach, and that stuff never made into the movie. So I'm like, man, what really happened in this movie? So much stuff. Forrest that, I Whitaker's feel like character I've... completely like changed his appearance in the movie. Yeah, I, I feel like I've never seen a trailer more changed from a movie than Rogue mm -hmm. One <clears throat> from the shots in to make it. And it's like Marvel does that all the time, Yeah, but not to that extent. Mm -hmm. I feel like the Rogue One trailer and the Rogue One movie were like, Two different projects, just like holy shit. And if shit. Marvel does it with their trailers, it's on purpose, like yeah. Endgame. It's purposeful. I know there's some stuff in Rogue One that they did for the trailer specifically, but in general, there's a lot of stuff in that movie that seems to have been reworked. Even mm -hmm. stuff with Darth Vader. Like, yeah. There's some stuff that's in the trailer that you don't see in the movie, uh, and I really do wonder, like, okay, what what was this movie really supposed yeah. to be? Yeah. Wild. Wild. Uh, Finsegator says I never saw Rogue One but the trailers look cool if you have Disney Plus uh, I would definitely check it out it, I like the movie um, I think it's a interesting entry in the Star Wars universe especially because it does take place it, it's mm -hmm. literally based off the second paragraph of the opening crawl of episode 4 yeah I uh, I liked scenes in the movie yeah as a whole I was kind of eh on the whole thing but I liked scenes a lot yeah. There were, like, scenes in that movie where I was like, oh, book! But as a whole, I, I kind of came out of it like, okay, yeah, cool, another Star Wars movie. I, wanna, I don't know if I want to ask this question, because it's a spoiler, but it's also been four years since it's come out. Oh, Vader? Yeah. Oh, the, I mean, that's the ending scene. Yeah, that scene's amazing. You do like it. I do like it, because I've wanted to see that. I, as a video game player, mm -hmm. I've gotten to see that, <clears throat> right, you know? Right, But in the movies, you never really get to see Vader as he is yeah. in the games and stuff, you know? So it was really cool to see mm -hmm. Vader cut loose. Mm -hmm. uh, that scene was cool. Uh, there were a lot of really good scenes. I just yeah. kind of came out of it like, okay, all right, you know, another I, Star Wars um, movie. <clears throat> I, I know that there's a little bit of a back and forth with that scene because some people really like it, but then there's other people out who think, like, it's a good scene, but I... I wonder if it would have been more impactful had it involved any of the characters that are oh, actually yeah, yeah, in yeah. the movie. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Again, that's my thing. It's like there's yeah. scenes in that movie that are really cool. Yeah. I mean, as a whole, I'm just like, man, this feels like it was made by committee and cut apart mm -hmm. and that the original director's intention was moved all over the place because yeah. there was just so much stuff that I'm like, we cut where? We're doing what? Yeah. We're going where? You know, like. Yeah. It, just, it just felt like, like the problem I have with a lot of those where it just it feels like Disney's got – a lot of hand on that. Yeah. You know, Marvel has that issue sometimes too. Yeah, and I it's interesting you bring that up because I <clears throat> I really do feel like that Marvel had that maybe more so in the beginning or in phase 2. Phase 4 they really let people have fun. Yeah, or phase 3. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah when yeah, when Infinity War and all that stuff. Yeah, you know, it's like Black it seems Panther. like the Russo brothers kind of helped pave the way for Marvel to chill the fuck out. <laughs> Yeah, it, it seems like Phase 2, there was some stuff in Phase 2 that it felt a little more committee-esque. And I think by the time we got to, I think really with Age of Ultron, they were like, okay, yeah. we, we got to I have this more out. thoughts on this stuff, but I can't say stuff because of the things I've signed. If I beat it out of you. I mean, you and I talk about it offline. Yeah, we do, we do. I just can't, like, <laughs> yeah. I don't want Papa Disney, like, knocking yeah, on my door. I know. If I'm anyone knock knocks on, on our door, door <laughs> it'll be Papa, Bi Papa yeah. Disney. Like, they go after shit. <laughs> Bob Iger's going to be like, excuse me, sir. You're like, oh, God. They got that shit on algorithms. I feel like right now, just because we said the word Disney, the second this uploads yeah. to YouTube, it's going to be like, okay. Oh, what do, what do they say? All right. What can cool. boys say? Yeah, they're cool. I want to listen. I want to listen. Yep. Uh, yeah. I, 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 again, you know, it's like you would technically have the most insight because of this, but uh, – it's always interesting to kind of hear and listen and find out and talk to people and, and hear about sort of the process of how their movies are made. They have what they call, I think they call it the um, the Marvel, uh, I forget what they call it, but like the Marvel higher-ups, 
uh, they have like the executives they have like a, a name yeah um a group name but yeah i don't know i think that's the biggest thing with star wars and i think episode nine is sort of a big is proof of that in some in some regard that movie feels like it was very much made by a committee who was extremely concerned with what reddit and twitter said yeah about their franchise yeah which, I, is, I which think, is disappointing i think uh parliament they call moral what, parliament what i would be most interested in seeing after what i know yeah is how what td did it with ragnarok with ragnarok mm-hmm. how and it's very clear they had some reshoots yeah and they did some stuff but like overall that movie feels like it has the most creative leeway are these tomatoes no they're lotus roots they're oh. fucking great dude these are like some of the best chips i've ever had they're so good um i would be really interested though to know a little bit more about that process and like if like every other marvel movie they ended up doing months of reshoots mm-hmm. after uh you know after uh audience feedback and stuff was he able to continue kind of putting his flavor into it uh, how did he navigate that and come out of it with such a sense of original concept? Because I, I feel like this is part of why all those Marvel movies have the same tone and vibe is because mm-hmm. they, they are kind of cut by committee and they are kind of built by committee. And it's weird to watch one that has such a clear artistic vision that really stands out from the crowd. And and then I'm just stuck wondering, like, how'd you do it, bro? How? How'd you get through that process? Because yeah. so many mm-hmm. others at a much higher caliber, yeah, have not been able to. Yeah, for sure. And I think, like, it always surprises me when they get a, spe- a certain director. Like, when they got Taika Waititi, I thought, how is Taika going to make a movie in this universe that feels like a Taika Waititi movie? Yeah. Same thing with Ryan Coogler, honestly. Yeah, and but I could feel more, more of the hand in that one. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You could feel more of that, that there was some very Coogler stuff in that movie yeah. with the camera movement and certain scenes, for sure, and the attitude. But then you could still feel... You could feel it. Mm-hmm. You're like, just when it starts to get really original and unique, it's like, all right, hit the brakes. Let's go back to Marvel formula. Yeah, and I think that's the one big thing. If you were to watch Creed and Black Panther back to back, you would see that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because I think Creed it would fall more in line with something like Fruitvale Station. It would oh, feel totally. much more in that family of movie. Yeah. But then when you get to Black Panther, you're like, uh, I see it. It's there. It's there. You can feel it. It's sprinkled throughout, but there is this like, Parliament, Marvel yeah, Parliament, yeah, yeah. sort of like yeah, yeah. It's there. gloss over and, it. And, yeah. and to their credit, I'm not. I don't want this to be interpreted as me dogging on that process either, because they figured it out. They kind figured of. it out yeah. because what they're able to do then is have less movies that suck. Yeah, you know, it's like they might be a little bit middle of the road, but you kind of know going into it, you're getting a good movie, even ones that aren't. As good are still way better than most other alternatives yeah, yeah. because that formula does work and that committee does grind out a movie that works for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. So I'm not I'm not really faulting on it. I'm yeah. just most curious about how Watiti was able to keep such a true artistic voice of his own yeah. throughout that process when so many others have tried and not been able to like so clearly push through. I I'd, sure. I'd find that fascinating. Yeah, I'd I mean, love to know. I, and I think that's what makes us super intrigued about Thor Love and Thunder is like yeah. okay, you got a little taste of the Waititi in the Marvel universe. Is Kevin Feige now going, "Okay, man, have fun." Or is it still going to be something where it's like, "Cool, Taika, I mean, you can do this." Hemsworth but said it's his like craziest script he's read yet in all yeah. the Marvel universe. I'm like, makes me so hyped. Yeah. Speaking of Hemsworth though, yeah. I do want to talk about our movie picks for today. Oh, yeah, we haven't done that yet. We haven't done that yet. <laughs> uh, so one pick is from all of us at Hyper, and then two picks are from Lucas. That's why it feels kind of like, what's this one movie doing with these two Coen brother movies? <laughs> Hail Caesar, amazing movie. I like it better than... Um, you want to cut to my computer there? Oh, yeah, 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 I can do that. I, I like Hail Caesar better than... Uh, what was that Tarantino one that came out this year? <laughs> Oh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? Once Upon a Time. I feel like they're kind of touching on similar things, but I like Hail Caesar better because I like Coen Brothers' style better. Uh, A Serious Man, another absolutely awesome, hilarious, very dry movie. And then we have Extraction. (laughs) And the reason Extraction is on there is because we have a unique opportunity in that Malika happens to be friends with multiple people who worked on this movie. Uh, One's a producer. One is a stunt coordinator, and we might be able to talk to both of them next week. And uh, to we tight. we might be trying to interview one on a hypercast, yeah. and then get get 
Like, if we could get the stunt coordinator to actually watch the movie with us and for the watch through. along, because the stunts in the movie are fucking nuts. I really enjoyed the movie. It's a standard action film, but the second the chase started and like the first like ending of the first like quarter of the movie, I was like. I'm on board. <laughs> this is my shit. Yeah. Like seeing somebody push the limits of what can be done always gets me hyped and gets me really excited. Mm-hmm. And I would love to talk to a stunt coordinator on that movie just from a standpoint of like you're doing super long takes with wide angles uh, that go into tights. And um, it's not the kind of movie with a giant, giant budget where you'd be able to do frame by frame fra- face replacement through the whole fucking movie. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure there's one or two shots where they probably did that. But you kind of get the vibe really quick. Like, oh, Hemsworth is doing his stunts here. <laughs> Hemsworth is doing his stunts. Yeah. Um, or the, throwing it up. Yeah. And the director's strapping a camera to himself as he gets drug around on a car, you yeah. know? Yeah. So I would love to talk to a stunt coordinator yeah. on that film. That'd be amazing. It was nuts. That'd that be super movie's cool. movie's crazy. Mm-hmm. It's, it hits hard. It's hard to watch, too, at times because it doesn't, it doesn't pull back on some of its violence. Mm-hmm. It doesn't show it all. It doesn't go as far as, like, Indonesian films where it's just straight up showing you the violence. But you hear it. You see it off the side. You see it start, and then it might move yeah. away. And it, it hit some of that stuff's. <sighs> so you can go to oneshot.storylogic.com and make your pick. Yeah, Malika said this guy, uh, he worked on John Wick and Mulan as well. Oh, nice. So, yeah, uh, if, if that ends up awesome. winning, I think it would be really cool to try to get them in. For sure. Uh, and we're kind of working on their schedule. You know, we've had to move movies around before, so it's possible it could win today, but if they aren't available next Thursday, we, we might, might have to move, move around. it. Just because I, I think that would be really dope. I think it would be awesome. I would love to get that insight. I think it would be super cool to have that. Yeah. I mean, I haven't watched the, show, the, the movie yet, and I'm like – Kind of debating of like, well, should I just wait and experience it for the first time with the audience? Because I know when we did that with Train to Busan, that was really fun. So I might wait, but there's also that little that part of me cool. like, God damn it. Because I have I seen it, so I'll be yeah. able to field questions. That's true. That's true. And I do kind of want to watch you react to some of those action scenes for the first time. Okay. Because there's, there's some moments where you're like, how did they do that? Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> Son ah! of a bitch. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Really fun. Really fun movie. Uh, very standard action movie, though. Yeah. Like, very but standard. sometimes, like, I watched The Commuter the other night. Yeah, I like when action's done I'm well. I'm fine with it. I put movies in different categories. It's kind of like how Malika sometimes just wants to watch a romantic comedy on Netflix. You know what you're getting into. Sometimes yeah. I want to watch a standard action movie with good stunts. I know what I'm getting into. Yeah, and Commuter, does, like, the action in The Commuter, it's fine. It's nothing special. But it's like sometimes, you know, I just want to sit back and watch Liam Neeson just beat some people up. Or, or people beat him up. Or him interact with a, with a character. Or just to see how like a scenario plays out on a train for an hour and a half. Mm-hmm. I'm into it. I don't know. Yeah. It's cool, man. You don't need a fucking reason to, for, to justify everything. <laughs> yeah. It's true. It's true. Sorry, I just wanted to go off on that little tangent oh. after we brought up Hensworth. It's important to let the people know what we're doing. I want to let you know what's up. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Thanks for being here. I know it's like wild out there. So thank you just for being bit. here today. Just a bit. Just a I bit. I appreciate it. Um... This is a topic that I feel like is going to continue to evolve. No, oh, hang on. This one right here. Yeah, let's get into that shit. Oh, okay, okay. okay. Regal clarifies stance on Universal. So they, they, they jumped the gun and were like, yeah, we're with you, AMC. And then people were like, whoa, whoa, you know that you're like half your movies are going to be Universal this year. And they went, oh, shit. Uh, I mean, we were being sarcastic. That was a sarcastic comment. Here's exactly what Regal said. <laughs> they tweeted it out this morning. They said, Regal is not boycotting Universal nor any other studio. We will continue our normal policy and play movies that respect the theatrical window, allowing movies to be released first in theaters prior to streaming or video on demand platforms. I respect that. So, so what they're basically saying is, we want to be able to call out your bullshit, but please continue giving us movies first. Pretty That's much. That's kind of how I interpret that. Pretty much. Like, it's kind of like being like, we're not going to run Troll w- Trolls World Tour. I mean, nobody is. But we wouldn't do it yeah. because you put it on digital first. So we wouldn't run it. But your next movie, y- you can, uh, please. <laughs> please. Pretty please. We have nothing in theaters. Please. For the love, for the love of God. For please. the love of God. Um, and then, so, the um, CEO of Universal, NBC Universal, Jeff Schell, 
he came out as well to kind of further talk about and discuss. Mm. Oh, I'm curious. What was <laughs> what what was discussed? One of the things that he did say was, I would expect that consumers are, are going to return to theaters, and that the P PVOD system will be part of the film environment as a complementary element. Um, and they also did talk about Peacock and how it's pacing ahead of expectations. So he says the Troll sequel was ready to go. They worked really hard on it. They spent a lot of money on it. And Wait, this isn't AMC. This is NBC. Or NBC Universal. Universal, yeah. Okay, okay. And, there, and he was talking about you know, how consumers desperately needed something. You know, Families needed something to entertain their kids. He said that the idea behind the PVOD offer was to preserve the premium uh, nature of movies. And he also says he couldn't be more pleased with Donna Langley and her team and their execution and that the numbers were really interesting concluding. I would expect the consumers are going to return to theaters and p will be a part of the film business as a, as a complimentary offer, not a replacement. Um, there are also some quotes from other people like Comcast who are saying we'll determine a future distribution approach on a title-by-title title basis. So I think, you know, kind of piggybacking off of yesterday's conversation, I think this is going to be an, an evolutionary thing. I think more companies are going to look at this and say, like, okay, what makes sense for us to release theatrically? What doesn't make sense for us to release theatrically? If we made a movie with the intention of putting it out in theaters, wh how do we really think it's going to do? Trolls, World Tour, I don't think it would have done that well. I think it was an yeah. advantage for Universal yeah. to put it out on people. Totally, 100%. Yeah, it's not, and, and holding it would have done them no good. Mm -hmm. No good at all. Yeah, I mean, and, and there's a good point brought up in the chat that, like, Peacock was supposed to have the Olympics. Mm -hmm. Now they're not. For now. Yeah. Until we know until what's next up. Year. So they're probably scrambling to do anything to hold on to that massive investment mm -hmm. and make it still viable. Huge advertising investments and all that sort of stuff. So I think, yeah. I think just like we said yesterday, every studio is going to have to really reevaluate their slate. And I think... I also do personally think that there's only so many movies that we can put into 2021. Yeah. At a certain point, I think... Well, it just pushes everything back. Yeah, I think at a certain point, like, are you going to continue to push movies back year after year after year? Or do you bite the bullet and you just say, like, we had a theatrical release window for this movie. Because it's a smaller film, it's not a Wonder Woman. We don't think it's necessarily worth it for us to put it on uh, in, in a theater. So, fuck it. We'll, pay, we'll charge people $20 to rent it on HBO Max or whatever. Mm -hmm. I think that's going to be a pretty big consideration going forward. So a little bit of ba backpedaling, it feels like, from, from Regal. I think that they do want to stay in the <laughs> theatrical distribution yeah, business, obviously. they don't. It's, it's, it's just clear. You don't want to, like, they're going to have so few movies to mm -hmm. play when things open up over the summer. Yeah. And they're going to have to be in everyone's good graces. And it sucks. I see both sides of that. Yeah. But it always cracks me up the further you get like deep into not just not just politics but also, you know, business industries, yeah. you know, stuff like that. <clears throat> it's all about hurt feelings. Yeah, pretty much. It's dick measuring contests and hurt feelings. It's bruised egos for sure. Bruised egos, people trying to like grandstand and, you know, I'm not going to put Mitt Romney on the on the committee with all the other senators cuz mm -hmm. I don't like him. I don't, I don't like him. Even though he has experience with this kind of stuff, I don't like him. Yeah. And, and you know, and then you get into this movie theater stuff, and it's like, well, you did something I don't like. Boo on you. Yeah. And now I'm going to have Fuck a personal you. vendetta against you. Yeah. And it's just wild when you see – I guess <clears throat> we always like to imagine in our minds that larger companies and politicians and things like that, because they're having to <clears throat> make these decisions that involve so much money and mm -hmm. so many other people's – wants wishes and livelihood yeah that they would be made without hurt feelings yeah you know and people would be above it but they're very much not yeah <coughs> easy there easy it's there the chips it's the chippos i i, I there's like it, it's been brought up in the chat room as well there is one movie that i would love to know what the fuck the game plan is with guess new mutants what is what are they gonna do with that movie who at knows this, at this point the movie was supposed to come out two years ago. At this point, do you just say, you know what, let's just put it on Hulu? Or do you really sit in a meeting and, and try to justify, do we, do, do we think this movie will make money at a theater? It's like such an interesting question with that movie in particular. I honestly think the best, best move they could have made was the second all this stuff hit, be like, you know what, surprise. Hulu. This movie's done, we're dropping it. Yeah. 
but I understand contracts and legal stuff are probably sure. in the way of that. But. Yeah, and I mean, I think also that movie is very unique because of the fact that it it doesn't, as far as we know, it doesn't interconnect to any other movie and or franchise. So if it's a one and done, does it really matter if it goes to the theater or not? Wouldn't you maybe want to push people to your digital streaming service? I, I don't know. Maybe there are some contractual obligations that we obviously don't know about. I'm sure there are. Yeah, that would prevent the movie from going uh, to a streaming service immediately. Uh, and maybe it maybe it is this constant moving deal with with cinemas of like, yo, this movie, you guys keep moving it and moving it and moving it. And I moving bet the it. deal isn't with cinemas and it's with the streaming platforms. Mm. I bet it's that like some HBO deal or something. Exactly of like when it does hit, it has to go to this service first. But if yeah. that service is not a like paid uh, rental kind of thing, like I c- I would imagine almost it's like, hey, we get this first when it comes out of theaters. Mm-hmm. But if it doesn't go to theaters, that might you know like, yeah, I don't know, it, yeah. Yeah, and I mean that's pretty common with a lot of movies. That's why when a lot of people say like, "Oh, why is this? Why is you know, X movie on Netflix but not on Disney Plus or vice versa?" Well, that's probably because they have a deal with Netflix that they got the streaming rights for that movie. I know it's like with certain DC movies, you know, they're not available on things like Dis- on uh, D- DC Universe. Maybe they'll be on HBO Max. I don't know. B- probably because they have a deal with HBO that it's can only be on HBO right mm-hmm. now. So there's a lot of like complicated things in between all that shit that can sometimes get in the way of why certain things uh, don't get released the way that we would kind of expect. I think the other big question too is talked about a lot is the moviegoers, us, you know, the people who actually want to go to the movies. But I think a lot of people are really demanding from theaters, hey, we want some sort of a guideline. We want sort of safety measures that are going to be put into place. THR actually ran a poll, and uh, they found that 22% would consider making a trip to a cinema within the same time period if a state reopens early. Only 22%. And it was a survey of about 2,200 people conducted between April 22nd and 26th. Um, as a number of states, including Texas, Florida, and Georgia, live shelter-in-place orders, even if their locales uh, don't satisfy benchmarks laid out by the White House. Uh, one of the biggest things that was requested and or pulled was consumers want sanitizing stations at the theater. They want staggered seating, uh, which I think is a really big thing, which, which basically is like <clears throat> no people to the to the side of you, no people behind you. So you're basically having a, like, a, like a checkerboard, more or less, of seating. Uh, Dan Merle actually did a really cool video that he put out yesterday called, well, it's one of his charting videos, and he tried to mathematically predict how much each theater would have to make and how many people would have to be in attendance in order for a movie like Avengers Endgame to make the money that it made last year with all of the, like, uh, restrictions that are in play right Holy now. Holy shit. He, and I, I think he kind of broke it down to there would have to be a minimum of 66 people uh, allowed into a theater, which means every theater on average would have to be able to seat at least 132 people. He broke down exactly like how much money you'd have to make per theater, you know, per screen, all that sort of stuff. It's a really fascinating breakdown. And it gives you a lot of insight into just how much a movie would have to technically make now to even like be profitable. Well, that's what I meant. Like, I think these theaters are in panic mode because if there are any sorts of social distancing aspects put into place when they come back online, yeah. how do they justify their costs? How does AMC Universal pay their fucking rent? Yeah. You know what I mean? And they have 15 theaters, but if those theaters only have 60 seats and they can only seat 25 to 30 people – and how many of those theaters need to be like filled up almost to maximum yeah. 50% capacity? Like, do you put Tenet on all 15 screens and pray that, like, they, they probably will? You know, I, I, I see that. I don't think they're going to have any competition I, at I, the time. No, it's going to be Tenet is literally the first big blockbuster movie that's scheduled to come out this year hmm. in the summer, which is insane. Right now, Bad Boys for Life is the highest grossing film of 2020. Holy shit! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's the highest gross. I think it might be the highest grossing movie worldwide, actually. Oh, my God. It did really fucking well. It did really well. I thought wow. it was fun. Um, it's nuts. It's nuts. It's, it's, it's really, really crazy. But, yeah, I, I think, like, Tenet would have to come out. It would have to play on every freaking screen. Yep. It would have to have every theater filled 50% capacity. And I still think that it would probably not hit expectation, mm-hmm. uh, at least what uh, Warner Brothers is predicting. But I think like that's really the only way that that movie and Wonder Woman have a chance of like doing well, you know. So it's going to be really interesting to see, and who knows? Maybe we'll get through. I think later on in the year there's going to be a little bit more of like stacked releases, but 
maybe it's a good power play for every movie to just come out once every two weeks. But I know that's also not so, realistic. The thing I want to see that I won't be able to see, yeah. but at least you could tell me so I'm more comfortable, is less so much that there's hand sanitizer stations and more that I know the crew yeah. between movies is sanitizing every seat yep. and every railway. Yep. And, you know, just That's like Target and just like some of these other businesses have yeah. adapted, uh, I want to know that, like, yo, AMC, are you actually having your crew wipe down every seat? Do you, st yeah. <clears throat> do you stagger the distance between movies or hold people from being able to enter as early? Yeah. Uh, which I think they should. I know they try to, like, sell that ad space time, but it's like all our seats are reserved. Yeah. Hold people from coming in as early and wipe every fucking thing down. I think you would have to give uh, – you would have to build in a 45-minute to 16-minute window in between every showtime to allow the crew to, like, properly go in mm -hmm. and sanitize every single seat. Yeah. You know, so I, we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how that shakes out. But uh, – <sighs> Who knows if Tenet will even come out in July? Because that doesn't mean shit if there's hand sanitizer, but you immediately sit in a seat that, that somebody else sat, in. sat in and it's not wiped down. Yeah. You know, like it doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter at all. It doesn't matter at all. Uh, we only got a few minutes left, but I think this is a really interesting topic to kind of discuss and, and, and cap, the, cap the show off on. Hercules live action remake in the works from Disney. <laughs> Shang-Chi writer Dave Callahan will be writing it. Joe and Anthony Russo are producing, but not interesting. directing. The remake via their Agbo banner. So yeah, they're, they're really jumping on the producing train. Yeah. Well, <laughs> when they were at Comic-Con, they announced, I think, eight to ten movies that they were in some way, shape, or form And I know in. of at least five that they're involved in that they didn't announce. Mm. That they were, uh, that behind the scenes people were talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. But they haven't announced. At Comic-Con, they announced quite a few. Uh, they also announced some shows that they're working on, too. Uh, I guess Extraction would be one of the first ones, which I don't remember if they talked about it at Comic-Con <coughs> last year. I guess at that point, they would have already been working on it to some capacity. Mm -hmm. In any case, I think it's very interesting to, to have the Russo brothers working on Hercules. Not something that I would have expected. Granted, they are producing it. That doesn't mean that yeah. they will be creatively involved. Uh, they're using you know their name, their banner, and D writer David Callahan, who wrote Shang-Chi and The Legend of the Ten Rings, to start expediting the process of getting the movie made. I also think that David Callahan was a writer on either Wonder Woman or Wonder Woman 1984. So, you know, I, I, my history with Hercules is I've seen the Disney movie once when I was a kid. I've seen the Kevin Sorbo show plenty of times growing up. There was a great question, a great poll that went out today. I think it was Fandom that put it out of like, who would you cast? And they listed out every character individually. And I was like, nah, man, fuck that. Just put the cast of Thor Ragnarok in the movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what's been really fun? Uh, if you had told me midway through last year this is all going to go down and yeah. all new movies were going to be paused, I think I would have been like, oh, man, I'm so bummed. But doing these watch-alongs every day has made me not really miss new movies at all. Because I feel like it just makes you remember like, oh, I missed so much stuff. Yeah. There's so many things that came out that I didn't see. Yeah. And this is a great opportunity to kind of dive back in and, and see all this stuff and catch up because there's just so much good art out there. I agree. I think the advantage if they're – I mean, you know, whatever. It is a little bit. But I think the one thing that is true, I – definitely would not have caught up as on s as many movies and shows as I am catching up on now. Yeah. Just no possible way. It's not it's just not it like doesn't factor into our into our work schedule. Like it doesn't allow for that to happen. So the fact that we do get to do that I think is pretty fucking cool. And I agree. I think there's a lot of stuff that I've discovered that I, I who knows when I would have gotten to watch Belle de Jour. Who yeah. knows when I would have seen Doc Tooth. I I've been exploring so much criterion and I've loved it for that. Um so, yeah, I, I think that's, like, one of the positive things is us being able to do it. And I love doing it with the audience, too. They, we talk about it all the time, but I think yeah. it's really cool and, to see how many people And I do want to bring up, we've like, seen. I've seen our numbers. I, we knew it was going to happen. It bums us out a little bit. We yeah. knew it was going to happen, though. Like, we're on average getting, like, 100 people less joining us for watch-alongs now. Uh, and I know a lot of that's because we, we can't play the sound anymore. Because, uh, you know, I imagined – there was a percentage of you that just kind of like liked watching with the sound and us. And now it's just like, we're silently sitting in a room 
and it's awkward. We knew that was going to happen. We didn't want to make that choice. We really didn't want to make that choice, but our legal team was like, you have to make that choice. Yeah. <laughs> this isn't an option. You have to. It puts you too much at risk. So it sucks. We, we knew that. Um, I really hope you all give them a chance, though. It's a really cool thing to watch movies together as a group. I know it's awkward, but if you pull up the movie, it's such a cool thing to jump in the chat and kind of like react with everyone mm-hmm. in those moments. I think it's really great. Yeah. For sure, for sure. Uh, Ray Ray, the Amazon Prime watch-alongs, we tested them. The issue is 25% of our audience is not United States. And I would say 25% of our audience is not United States, but 60% of our people who engage in chat are not United States. Like, mm-hmm. there's a vast – it's really – I find our community really interesting in that uh, we have way more American lurkers and way more overseas – chatters yeah uh then percentage of how many there are in the community so uh they're a very important part of our community people who are watching from other countries and i would hate to completely cut them off from the experience yeah because they are very active in our community people Mm. i'm sure there's quite a few people watching right now from not united states yeah and uh they're very loud they're very they're very seen in our community and i would hate to cut them off sucks agreed 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 in terms of uh, Hercules, you know, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. I feel like for me, it's – I don't really get too excited when uh, Disney announces they're doing a live remake of something. For me, it's really like, cool, who are you getting as the director? Who's the cast? Let me see a trailer. I wasn't really excited for Aladdin. I saw the movie, and I was like, it's fine. I think the only live-action Disney movie that I have enjoyed – actually, I don't know if there is one <laughs> – Lion King, I didn't like. I was like, y- yeah. you just replicated the same fucking movie. It's literally the same movie, just with CG animals instead yeah. of animated ones. So I don't know if I, I heard know. anyone speak really positively about it. Not one. I think the tech is cool as shit. Yeah. The tech is awesome. But Disney kind of went out there and talked about the tech. But I also do think that, like, yo, John Favreau. Why, why would you do The Lion King? Make something else. Make something original for Well, I think movie. a lot of people brought up really good points like Shadow just did. And yeah. this is the biggest thing I heard a lot of people talk about is animation conveyed emotion better. Yeah. Because it was allowed to be more expressive. Yeah. Of course. And it's trying animation. to make real like, looking animals have emotions Where they can as just strong as the animations mm-hmm. were. It's you know. very limiting. It's very yeah. limiting. Yeah. I think like if you're going to do Lion King as a, as, like, a computer generated remake – you know what? Just fucking go all in and make it boss the walls and just let them be fully, like, mm-hmm. you know, animated-like expressions instead of just trying to make it look real. I think it's cool. I think it really shows off the tech, but I also think John Favreau probably could have made, could have spent his time making something way different uh, that's not even The Lion King, and I think people would have still been impressed by the tech. So, Thanks, thank you for coming to my TED Talk. That's my that's my rant for the day. Do you want to close up by watching this Assassin's Creed Valhalla trailer? Oh, yeah. Let's check it out. Why not? Why not? Okay. Okay. Hopefully it plays without issue. Why do you do this to me? They are heartless. <laughs> Already jumping on your computer, isn't it? Dude, what is that? Hang on. What is that? I don't know, man. What is that? I don't what? know. Are you having to let it preload? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to. Right, let's try it again. What is that? I don't get it. I might have to make you start downloading all these first. Godless barbarians. God, I hope not. <laughs> Damn, that looks good. Yo, are we getting Vikings up in here? Jesus, that looks good. They murder and kill blindly. <laughs> Got my fucking Discord going off? Come on, y'all. Help me out here. Scar the lands of England. Lands they will never defend. Who's doing that? God damn it. Love. <laughs> the time has come. To speak to them in a language they will understand. Dude, this looks good. (laughs) 
<laughs> wow, this animation looks amazing. Getting audio lag too. <laughs> God damn. Yeah, you're gonna have to download videos. Dude's a beast. God damn. Whoa. Oh, oh damn. Yeah, baby. Okay. Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Dude, that Available looks fucking sick. That looks dope. I'm, I'm gonna play that hey, shit. Hey, who's blowing up your Discord? Who the fuck is blowing up my Discord? Who is blowing up your How Discord, damn. man? I don't have a single How Discord damn. notification. I don't know, man. How are you? You in some private room that just like tags Adam every two uh, seconds? <laughs> I know, man. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Before we cut over to board games, I want to give a special shout out to Fegs252 for your support. Metis Fadam, Jabberwocky uh, said extraction would be fun with the chat. Uh, Desert Disponia uh, for saying thank you all for the hard work you guys uh, do and happy to see Malika Cook, Extraction, and Kingdom. Thank you guys so much for your support. Woo! Uh, we are going <laughs> to move some audio knobs and come right back with board gaming with Malika joining us, so don't go anywhere. Don't go nowhere! 